to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a cap space, up, uh, cap space video up for you guys in which I go over the cap space um, and some of the things that the New York Giants could elect to do to try to free up as much possible cap space they can. But after looking it over today with the adjustments, Right now, SportTrack estimates that the salary cap is going to be at $175 million. Um, and that's kind of what Dave Gettman said in his press conference yesterday. The reason being, um, obviously, because fans couldn't go to the stadiums, or you know, at least not near as much as the year before. Some stadiums were, empty to, uh, were open to about 20%. But overall, the teams lost a lot of money because of that. And the salary cap is set to dip from $198 million, potentially, to $175 million. You're talking about a 15% decrease um, when it normally goes up by about 7 to 8%. It was projected to be about 212, 215. You're talking about $40 million less in the budget. And when you see what the New York Giants have, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Now, of course, the New York Giants could elect to backload some of these contracts and kind of try to prorate it um, as to what they think the salary cap will be going forward. But don't expect huge splashes this offseason. If the Giants want to try to bring in a high-impact player, they may have to get creative, potentially, with a trade. And we heard the, the uh, rumors that came out today from the Atlanta Falcons that Julio Jones could very well potentially be on the trading block. Now, the Giants could very well just sit back, take a wide receiver at 11, or maybe they want to try to get a wide receiver in free agency or potentially in a trade um, to try to give themselves more freedom where they're going to be picking at number 11. Julio Jones is up there in age. He's going to be 32 next year, and he's coming off a hamstring injury. He's still a very productive player, and when I get into the numbers, when I show you guys the slides, I think you'll probably agree with me. He's still one of the best wide receivers the league has to offer and would instantly bring credibility to our wide receiving core. It's something that we have not had since Odell Beckham left. He would be a bona fide number one wide receiver. The question is, what would the price be? Now, I'm going to go over some of the pros and the cons to bring in a guy like Julio Jones. And a lot of people are going to just automatically say, well, why don't you just go out and sign somebody? Well, it's not that simple. Um, you know, you could argue, and obviously you'd be giving up pieces to bring in Julio Jones, but you could argue bringing in a guy like Allen Robinson or Kenny Galladay could potentially be more of a risk than bringing in a guy like Julio Jones. And the answer is simple. Julio Jones, when I jump into the contract, he only has three more years left on his deal, and he, they'll be able to get out after two if they wanted to. Signing a guy like Kenny Galladay, who's had injuries this year, would probably require a five-year commitment due, you know, due to his age and uh, potential upside. The, uh, the same can be said for a guy like Allen Robinson. With Jones, it's really just a two-year commitment, and last year he still displayed that he could be a top-tier wide receiver. And like I said, it'll come down to the price. Um, and what teams could potentially be interested in acquiring his services. But it sounds like, according to Arthur Blank, and I'll pull up the exact quote, that he is very much in favor of moving on from Julio Jones if the right deal presented itself. I also wanted to jump into Leonard Williams and give my opinion on that. And I think a lot of us just seem to think for sure that Leonard Williams is going to be back. And I do not think that it's a foregone conclusion. Yes, Dave Gettleman is back. Yes, Dave Gettleman traded for Leonard Williams. But I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you two things. One... Joe Judge, I think we all agree, is just as much in charge of the personnel decisions as Gettleman is. I think it's I think it's a collaborative effort, right? And Leonard Williams was fantastic this year. He was incredible. And if he does hit the open market, he's going to get a lot of interest from other teams. But right now, if you look at the New York Giants budget, they don't have a lot of money to spend. And like I said, they could backload the contract. And if they think they need him that badly, they may very well do it. He's a very good player. You could argue was our best player in this year's defense. If it wasn't him, it was James Bradbury. He had 11 and a half sacks. He did compile some of those numbers against poor offensive line. I think he had two and a half against the Seahawks. He had three against Dallas uh, the last game of the year. But regardless, Leonard Williams was a force for the majority of the season. And since he's been a New York Giant, it has pr been proven that it worked out for Dave Gettleman. Whether or not that you, you agree or disagree with the trade, he's been a force for this New York Giants defense. He's helped in both run and you know, and, and getting after the quarterback, run defense and getting after the quarterback. One of the best players in the league, he had a PFF grade of 80. If you want to look at analytics, there's no denying it. He was a very good player, and we all know that he had the, you know, the incentive to try as hard as he could in a contract year. But I do think the coaching staff got the most out of him. And what you got to ask yourself as a New York Giant fan, if you have a very strong coaching staff, Patrick Graham is back, is it worth investing that much into a player like that with the salary cap going down 
if you feel you could get the most out of your players with a guy like Graham? That will be the biggest question that the New York Giants have to ask themselves this offseason. And that, like I said, they're not going to be able to go on a spending spree. There is something called a salary cap. And there's only so much that they're going to be able to do. I'll jump more into it tomorrow. But let's jump into some of the things that I wanted to show you guys about the um, market first for the defensive tackle position. Uh, obviously, I think we all agree he's not on Aaron Donald's level. But all you got to do is look at the Forrest Buckner. And granted, with the cap going down... Leonard Williams probably won't be able to command the same salary. Buckner signed this extension, I'm pretty sure, last year. Uh, a four-year, $84 million a year, or uh, $21 million a year on average. Buckner is a great player. This year he had seven and a half sacks. I think he was coming up a nine-sack season that year. But you look at Leo Williams. The guy had 11 and a half sacks this past year. He was known as a guy with tremendous upside when he first joined the league. A lot of people thought he was the best player in his draft class. And if you're Leonard Williams coming up the year you did you're going to expect to get similar money. Now, like I said, it may be a 15% decrease because the salary cap's gone down and maybe Leonard Williams is willing to sign a one-year deal um, because of that, uh, be because next year he thinks he could get more based on the cap, but he's also, you know, running a risk. What if he does not match those numbers? What if he regresses? What if he gets injured? So there's a lot of risk for Leonard Williams, and I would think he's looking for long-term stability. But even if you take 15% off of that, you're still talking uh, about, well, 21, you're talking about uh, 18, 18 to 18 and a half million dollars. And I'm going to get into the exact cap, uh, cap space, but you got to ask yourself, are you willing to give Leo four years, 18 per? Because that may be the going rate and it may even be more. Leonard Williams, you know, may, there may be a team desperate enough with a lot of cap space, like the Indianapolis Colts, uh, you know, just a, just a team, obviously not them, they just brought in Buckner, but there's a lot of teams with cap space that may look to bring them in. You look at the Washington football team, right? They've got cap space, who knows? Um, so it it is what it is, and 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 you better believe that Leonard Williams will test the market to see, see how much he could get. This is the word coming out of the Atlanta Falcons and Arthur Blank. Falcons owner Arthur Blank confirms Julio Jones and Matt Ryan could be traded. That was as recently as, I think, a day or two ago, um, and that's coming straight from the owner. As far as Julio Jones' production, this is what he's done throughout his career, and we all know he's a fantastic receiver. All right, he made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Pro Bowls, two All Pros, and even last year in only nine games where I think a lot of people felt like he may have fell off a bit, he had 771 yards in nine games. You're talking about a guy who was on pace to have about 1,400, uh, maybe 1,300 yards, uh, yards receiving and about six touchdowns. I mean, the guy's definitely still a supreme threat. He would definitely help this wide receiving core. And you'd only have about a two-year commitment when you look at the salary. That's where it gets somewhat intriguing to me. Now, of course, you got to worry a little bit about the age for sure, being that he's entering the tail end of his prime and he's coming off a hamstring injury. But I think he still displayed last year when he's on the field and when he's healthy, he's still a high-end wide receiver. The Falcons, it makes complete sense to move on from Julio Jones. They look at their situation right now. They see a 32-year-old receiver. While he's still very good, they know they're nowhere near close to winning and they're looking to blow it up. They're also potentially looking to move on from Matt Ryan, which to me signifies that the Atlanta Falcons will be in the market for a quarterback, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense for them when they know that they're going to need to restock and retool to hold on to play a player like Julio Jones if they could get good draft capital. Now, if I'm the Giants, am I willing to give up multiple first-round picks to bring in a guy like Julio? No. I need to continue to build through the draft, and he's going to be eating up a lot of your salary cap. However... The attraction here is it is only a two-year commitment. So for the right deal, could it potentially make sense? Possibly, if Atlanta was willing to eat, eat, eat it up. You look over the next two years, he carries a $23 million dead cap hit. I'm sorry, a $38 million dead cap hit in 2021. Obviously, he's going to be on the team if you trade for him next year. The following year, you're still not going to be able to get out of the deal, and hopefully he continues to play great, and you don't have to, where he'd be a $15.5 million hit. In 2023, he would cost either 19 or he would, or he would go 7.75 against the cap. If you were to cut him, you'd save approximately 11.5 to $12 million. Or if he was still playing good, you let him play out the contract at the age of 34. But it's not as long of a commitment as it would be if you brought in a free agent wide receiver. Again, I think it would it would depend on the, you know, the the uh, the price tag for the other potential free agents if you were looking to go that way in free agency. In the end, if I had to guess as a Giants fan, I think the Giants stay the course. I think they try to continue to build through the draft, and I don't expect any mega signings this year for the simple reason of this. And it's unfortunate, but it's the whole league. It's not just the Giants. 
Everybody's going to have to be dealing with this. And this is this is an estimate. I think this is worst case scenario. But you're starting to get word. You heard it from Gettleman in the press conference yesterday that the New York Giants salary cap, they're expecting it to be in the $175 million range. And if it is that right now today before cuts, which the Giants obviously have a lot of cuts that they could potentially make that will go over tomorrow, is what they would have in salary cap space. Negative $2 million. And you may say to yourself, how is that possible? Well, if it was going to be the typical 8 to 10% increase and the and the salary cap was going to be 215, the Giants would have had an additional 40. They would have had 38 to $40 million in cap space before cuts. And then they would have been able to bump it up to 70 to 75, possibly $80 million. Now you're talking about 30 to $35 million in space, maybe 40 if you make a lot of moves, and we'll go over all of it tomorrow. Um, and like I said, they could get creative in terms of the backloading of the contracts. That has to be factored in. And if you were ever going to get creative and backload contracts, and that'll be up to Abrams, it would be this year with the severe cut um, to this year's salary cap. And guys like Kevin Zeitler, it just doesn't add up. And we'll see. I think Zeitler is very necessary for this team. I still don't believe in our guards. But can you really justify paying a guy like Kevin Zeitler 8% of your available cap space um, in a year where you're looking to improve this team? The Giants and every team in the NFL are going to have a lot of challenges this year. And thinking outside of the box and trying to get creative with potential trades, maybe you trade players to try to offset some of that money that you take in from Julio, um, may be the way to go if it is the right deal. I'm not giving up an arm and a leg for a 32-year-old wide receiver who's coming off an injury. But for the right deal, it could make sense. We'll have to wait and see what the New York Giants decide to do this offseason. The first question they're going to have to answer is, is what do they do in-house? And of course, the big fish is Leonard Williams. And you better believe Leonard Williams is going to be commanding at least 18 to $18.5 million, or at least that's what he's going to want. And I would think he would get some offers from some teams out there on the open market. And Leo's not stupid. He knows that. He knows he's still, he knows he's still relatively young. He knows he's, he's at, you know, he just finished off the best season of his career by a mile, and he's coming up a year in which he was franchise tag and made $16.5 million and was not willing to work out a long-term extension before the year started because he was trying to get as much as he possibly could. We're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out, but the ownership will have to decide what is best for this team and how to spend the money that they're able to create after they make some of these cuts. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.